so in this video, we're going to go over the vertical shifting of graphs, okay? So when a function changes, uh, if we're adding a constant to a function, it's going to shift that graph vertically, okay? The graph's going to shift shift upward if the constant that we're adding is positive, like in part A here, part B in number 2, and part A in number 3, and the shift is going to be downward if the constant is negative, okay? So if you've got the graph of any function, y equals f of x, the graph of y equals f of x plus some constant will be shifted up c units, okay? So whatever that constant is, that's how far we're going to move the graph upward. And the graph of y equals f of x minus c, because that's negative there, we're going to shift the graph down c units, okay? So first I'm going to show you what it does to the table of values for the basic function, and then we'll show you how the graph looks uh, using Desmos, uh, the online graphing calculator, okay? So first thing, we've got a table of values for our basic quadratic function. Okay, we know the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola, and this is the basic one, and this is what a basic table of values would look like. Okay, plug these values in for x. These are the output values you get for y. Now, the reason the graph shifts upward, okay, when we add 4, what happens is we're going to change the y values. The x values aren't changing, the y values are. So when I plug in the same x values my y values have grown by 4. They've increased by 4. So we went from 4 to 8. We went from 1 to 5 and so on for those corresponding x values. Okay, so you see a, see a vertical shift upward here. Okay. For the next one, when we combine or when we add a negative, okay, or when we subtract 3 from our basic function, Okay, again, notice we're comparing it to the one in black here. Notice the y values are decreasing by 3. Okay, if you plug in negative 2 here, you're going to get 1. The reason you get 1 is because these y values are decreasing by 3. Okay, so 1 decreased by 3 gives us negative 2. Uh, we go down 3 from 0, we get negative 3, and so on. Okay, so you can see the y coordinates are changing, even when our x coordinates are staying the same. And that's what makes the, the graph shift vertically up if we're adding 4 or down if we're subtracting 3. Okay, For our cubic function, okay, you should know what the, the basic graph of a cubic function looks like now. In A, the, that basic cubic function should be vertically shifted down 2 because this is minus 2. And this, uh, for part B, the graph should be shifted up 5 units. Okay, So just again, a quick look. Okay, if we go down 2, notice the y values are decreasing by 2 each time, okay, from 0 to negative 2, from 1 to negative 1, and so on, all right? And when we add 5 uh, to the function, our y value should increase by 5, so from negative 8 to negative 3, from negative 1, um, this should be, excuse me, this should be a positive 4, okay, from 0 to 5, from 1 to 6, and from 2 to 13, okay? So notice that again that when we subtract a value from our function, the graph shifts down vertically. When we add a number to the function, it shifts up, okay? All right. And finally, let's look at an absolute value function. Again, we know the absolute value is a V-shaped graph. Uh, so the basic table of values would look like this, okay? You plug in negative 2, you get a positive 2, and so on down the list. So if we're going to add 6, it should be a vertical shift upward 6 units. So our y values are going to be bigger by 6. Okay, Our y values in this would be uh, shifted down 4 units. So our y coordinates should be 4 units smaller. Okay, And you can see 2 minus 4 is negative 2, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and so on. Okay, Now let's go to the graphs and we'll see exactly what these look like. So let's look at the graphs and see how they actually change by, by looking at the, the changes here. Uh, so I've already put in y equals x squared. So our next graph was going to be y equals x squared and plus 4. Okay, so you can see again, uh, let me drag this down a little bit. Okay, you can see how the red graph, which is our first function listed, it looks exactly the same. We're just shifting that graph 4 units upward uh, to create the blue graph here. Now, if we're going to graph y equals x squared minus 3, so y equals x squared minus 3, okay? Again, notice the graphs are exactly the same. It's just shifted uh, down 3 units from our original function, okay? So again, as we add values, the graph shifts up. As we subtract values, that original graph is going to shift downward, okay? 
Let's do y equals x cubed. Let me get rid of these. And let me change this to a three. So the basic cubic function is gonna look like this. Okay, so our second cubic function, we had y equals x cubed. Um, let me change that to a three and then minus two. Okay, so you see the graph again, looks exactly the same. It's just gonna be shifted down two units. Okay, and our second cubic function we wanted to shift, we had y equals x uh, cubed, and then it was plus five. Okay, so again, you can see the black graph here. It's the same exact graph as the red one. We're just shifted up two, four, five units. Okay, so that's how vertical shifts works. I'm not gonna show you the absolute value one. Hopefully by now you've got the the gist of it here. When we add or subtract uh, a value to a given function, we're just gonna shift that graph vertically.